Awesome. Thank you so much for your patience. Again, welcome this evening to the Healthy Start Parent Education Webinar. We are so excited to bring you some ex um, interesting um, information. Uh, we have an amazing guest speaker on today, or this tonight rather. Um, I'd like to introduce Leslie Stevens. Um, Leslie has actually been involved in the world of pediatric sleep breathing and airway health for over 35 years. She's a mother of three, and her goal and desire is to provide every advantage um, for children to allow them to live healthy and happy lives. Something you're gonna learn tonight is that there is a silent epidemic affecting nine out of 10 children. And as you'll learn tonight, it's, it actually manifests in a variety of symptoms that can be easily overlooked, misdiagnosed, and most unfortunately left untreated. It, it's critical that children are evaluated for sleep and breathing habits. Leslie lectures and trains all over the world. I, I don't think there's a question in reference to the subject of pediatric sleep breathing and airway health that healthy and Healthy Start's connection that she cannot answer. Um, you know, really, and when you have the backing of a company like Healthy Start, you have 51 years, you have over 4 million cases, and you have tons of research to back you. Leslie's mission is to educate both parents and dental professionals to ensure children a lifetime of health, happiness, and success. So I'd actually like to take this time to hand the floor and the mic over to Leslie Stevens. Thank you so much, Susie. Um, I am so happy to be here tonight. You know I love educating um, parents and doctors and, you know, just spreading the word about what we do. Um, what I hope I can educate you so that you can um, look at your own children and find out um, maybe some symptoms, maybe some ideas of what's going on with them. Um, maybe you already have a concern and you wanna get some more information. So if I don't answer your question or you have a question, please, um, post it on here. Please reach out to us. I will answer any question at any time. Um, I want to make sure you have the information so that you can proceed and address the needs of your children. Um, this is a critical time in their growth and development to be able to address these issues because not only are we looking to help your child today, but more importantly for their lifetime. So tonight we're going to talk about airway, breathing, sleeping issues. Um, and the underlying root causes that we can address um, with a symptom, with a, uh, a system that is easy to use. Um, children typically passively wear it at night and it will promote the growth and development. It will correct the improper habits. It will help your child be able to sleep, breathe, and develop an airway that will last them a lifetime. So, so many times when we talk about um, what is this? How do I identify it? How do parents look at their children and maybe kind of get an inkling that something's going on? Well, we're fortunate that we do have outward symptoms that appear in these children. Um, they're not consistent from child to child, but a variety of different um, areas that we can look for. And these areas, these are just some of the top um, conditions that we will look at, um, include mouth breathing, snoring, teeth grinding, swollen adenoids and tonsils, chronic allergies, eczema, asthma, ADD, ADHD, um, aggressive behavior, depression, irritability, anger, peer problems, few friends, bedwetting, difficulty in school, especially in the subjects of math, science, and spelling, delayed or stunted growth, restless sleep, nightmares, morning headaches, daytime drowsiness, frequently wakes up at night, sleep talking and walking, these are just some of the outward symptoms. And what I always tell parents is, your child might be exhibiting three or four of them. And you've been looking at them as isolated conditions rather than maybe these are all linked to a common underlying root cause. So we'll talk a little bit about that tonight so that you feel more comfortable and you understand where the relationships are. But please realize that this is very common nine out of 10 children suffer one or more of these outward symptoms. It truly is a silent epidemic. Currently in the United States alone, we anticipate 40 million children having these issues that are probably majority of the times going unnoticed. Um, and we'll talk about sometimes being even misdiagnosed. So typically right now as a parent, you know, obviously you're concerned, you see some of these symptoms in their child, 
maybe a child is demonstrating ADD, ADHD type behaviors. And right now we're contemplating medicating them. Or maybe your child is already medicated. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, the medication um, requires other medications. Very frequently, we see children that are on two to three medications um, and on all varieties of different dosages. Um, many times, these children are um, uh, suggested to do psychiatric testing, um, counseling, therapy, um, surgery, sleep studies. There's a whole variety of things out there that maybe are just looking at these conditions in an isolated way rather than looking at the underlying root cause. So let's talk a little bit about how these conventional treatments are basically only addressing the outward symptoms, not the root cause. Um, many of them tend to be short-term band-aids and often involve several drugs with many side effects and unfortunately can be costly, painful, time-consuming, and ineffective. So let's talk about the root causes. Let's take a look at what these are and how we can help identify them. So research over the past 20 years has linked each of these outward symptoms to root causes. And these root causes are mouth breathing, a narrow palate, meaning that you see a restriction, you tend to see some crowded teeth, improper tongue placement, that means the tongue can be laying low in the mouth, so they're mouth breathing. Or maybe you've heard of a tongue thrust, where as they speak, the tongue protrudes forward. Jaw relationships, meaning that they might have what we call overjet, meaning that the upper arch is in a forward direction and the lower arch is retruded back. So you have this large overhanging of the upper arch. Um, sometimes we have what we call a deep bite, meaning that we should be able to see when you bite down, some of your lower teeth, and in some instances, the upper teeth cover the entire lower teeth. Um, we might see other kinds of jaw relationships where we call it the lower third of the face. So typically, we look at the forehead, forehead being a third, the middle being a third, and the lower portion being a third. And sometimes, if you look at a child, you can see that that lower third is really very small. It's not in proportion. So we're gonna look at that. We're also gonna look at the profile of a child to see if that lower third is retrusive or in a backwards direction, and maybe if it needs to be pulled forward. Many kids have that deficiency. So those are kind of the outward symptoms we're gonna look at. So the first point and the first way we begin this discussion is we're gonna screen, meaning that we're gonna look at our child and we're gonna look at these um, features that might demonstrate there's a problem. Obviously, these are some dramatic pictures, but you kind of get the idea that we're talking about. So on the left, we look at a child that has circles under their eyes. Look at the head, it's lurched forward. Many times we see kids that have sleep issues or airway issues, they tend to lean their head forward because they're trying to get more air. Um, look at the child on the right. You can see again the deep circles, but then look at how his mouth is placed. It's open. The lips are not sealed. He is a mouth breather. This lip almost looks a little bit rolled, and he looks rather heavy. This child is not heavy, but the way his lower jaw is configured and the proportion to the neck is basically going to distort his look. So he looks like almost a double chin. We're also gonna look at the profile, as we said. So we wanna take almost a straight line from the forehead down to see where that child falls. You can see the deficiency in that lower jaw. Look at her lips, they're open, most likely a mouth breather. This rolled lip means typically that upper teeth, the upper arch is in a forward direction, or you can say the lower arch is retrusive. We want everything forward as much as possible. We're gonna talk a little bit about why that is and um, the possibility of increasing the airway. Look to the child on the right. You can see the same kind of situation. You can see a deficiency in that lower jaw, the mandible we call it. And this child, we say that the chin blends into the neck. It's almost like a funnel. 
There's no definition. We should have a definition of exactly the muscles so that that does not happen. We want that lower chin to be in a forward position so that it's in proportion. Look also at this child, she has a rolled lip. Again, you would anticipate that that upper arch is forward, the lower lip is interfering and pushing that lower jaw backwards. So these are just some of the facial markers that maybe you can look at in your child. It's always hard with your own child. Um, I'm a mother of three. Um, I look at my child day in and day out. Um, obviously, I'm probably a little bit more in tune of looking at um, dental deficiencies or growth deficiencies, but try to take a, a very proportional look. You can see the differences and what we can do. Um, the, the good news is they're young, we can promote growth. We get 54% more mandibular or lower jaw growth with these appliances than we do in a control sample. So it's amazing what we can do at this early age. We're also going to ask you as a parent, um, I think some of you probably have received the sleep questionnaire. If you haven't, you can go on our website. You can request from us. I'd love to send it to you. Um, I would take an assessment of your child. And we're going to look at these different 27 of the most prevalent outward symptoms of sleep. And we're going to basically provide or assign a numerical value to determine the severity of the condition. So it would be great. The initial means that is where you are at the beginning. We'll also follow up with these sleep questionnaires as treatment proceeds. But take a look, kind of evaluate your child to see where they fall. Um, the last question you'll see on the sleep questionnaire is in regard to speech. Because we're looking at the oral cavity and tongue placement, speech is very frequently um, impacted with this condition. So we have a few other questions at the bottom if you see that your child does have some difficulty with speech. So please fill this out. It's a great tool. It's a great monitor to kind of see what's going on. We actually did a research study on over 500 children um, with the sleep questionnaire to kind of determine what conditions we typically see. And this is where we got the statistic that nine out of 10 children have at least one or more outward symptoms of sleep. So the results of this study was mouth breathing and snoring are commonly associated with mo more sleep disorder breathing symptoms than any other symptom study. So let me just qualify this. Um, mouth breathing is exactly what it means. You breathe through your mouth. Many of you might say, well, aren't we supposed to? No, we're supposed to breathe through our nose. Um, and we'll talk about the function of the nose. Snoring is another, people think, well, if they mouth breathe, they must snore. That's not necessarily true. If you snore, we know you're a mouth breather, but you can mouth breathe without snoring. What I typically tell a mother or a father, take a listen. Even if you sneak into your child's room after they fall asleep and just listen, if you can hear them breathe, they're mouth breathers. If you want, you can take a little video, maybe just five minutes with your cell phone and then review it. You'll probably be shocked. I know as a mom or a dad, I talk to so many moms, they'll say, are you kidding me? When I put my child to bed, I tiptoe out of that room, I cross my fingers and I hope that child sleeps all the way till the morning. So many of us don't even realize what goes on at night while their child sleeps. I mean, obviously, if you have the bed covers all twisted, you know they're moving around. Um, maybe they're a bedwetter. Obviously, you would notice that. Sometimes, though, we don't really know that the child wakes up five times at night, or maybe they have nightmares or night terrors. Um, these are things that we should be identifying. Maybe they grind their teeth. You don't even know that. So it's things that we should be monitoring in regard to these kids. And this sleep questionnaire will help you do that. Um, this study also showed, as we said, nine out of 10 children had one or more outward symptoms of sleep. 60% of the sample had four or more of these outward symptoms. One out of five children experienced bedwetting at a later age. And I was pretty shocked with this. It's 18.7% of the population bed wets at a later age. That means if you have a classroom of 20 kids, you can anticipate 
for those kids being bedwetters. Now, obviously we don't talk about that a lot. Um, even if you're close friends, it's not typical that someone will say something. And, and many of us say, well, they'll grow out of it. Well, the next bullet point says between ages four and 12, 92.6% of these outward symptoms do not self-correct. And unfortunately, 30% worsen with age. So the takeaway is if you see it, we're gonna treat it. So address it. Um, sometimes when I talk to parents, especially about bedwetting, I'll ask them and they'll say, no, my child does not bedwet. They wear pull-ups every night. If your child is even wearing pull-ups every night, that in this realm of conversation is a bedwetter. So that, that's a hard thing for a child to overcome. And as a parent, God bless you, how much laundry do you do? So let, let's take a look, see if any of these things relate to your child and maybe we can help you with this. Um, let's take a look at the percentages of these outward symptoms and how often we saw them. What is interesting to note is when they mouth breathe, just by opening your mouth by a half an inch, you basically can constrict the airway of a child by six millimeters. Well, a seven-year-old only has a seven millimeter airway. So that means that child each night, every night, is trying to breathe through one millimeter of an airway. And we all realize that when we sleep, an important part of sleep is the REM sleep, the reparative sleep, to help us repair the day, our you know, ability during the day and basically rejuvenate ourselves so tomorrow's a fresh day. Well, that child never gets into REM sleep. He doesn't have that reparative sleep. So then other things start happening. They're gonna have a hard time focusing. They're gonna have a hard time staying awake. There are a lot of repercussions for that lack of REM sleep. And that's kind of where we're going with all of this conversation. Mouth breathing is a very serious part of this conversation. And what's interesting is if a patient does mouth breathe, we will anticipate they have eight other outward symptoms. And in this study, here are some of the other outward symptoms that were most frequently associated with mouth breathers. So you see snoring, talking while sleeping, allergic symptoms, fidgets with their hands. You can see the variety. Um, so what is the implications of this study? Well. The findings show that sleep disorder breathing, it's much more common and affects children even as young as two years of age. Well, there's been more research out that this actually affects unborn fetuses. Why is that? Well, think about it. If the mother has difficulty with breathing and snoring and getting enough oxygen, obviously the fetus is gonna suffer. At the same time, we see fetuses that are sucking their thumb. So, we know that these issues can even begin before a child is born. Begin the second, begin treatment as early as possible to ensure permanent changes. And last but not least, identifying outward symptoms displayed in 90% of the children that enter a dental practice can significantly reduce this epidemic and enable a doctor and a parent to successfully treat the overall health of their child or their patient. So it's critical, get in there and get in there early. So let's talk about airway. What is airway and why is it so important? So as I was talking, so what do we determine in airway? So a good visual to remember is we want to create a garden hose for your child. Give them the diameter of an airway so that the oxygen, the combination of CO2 and oxygen can basically um, be filtered into the body easily. Now, what happens when we have improper growth and development, improper habits, um, the mouth breathing that we just talked to, talked about, it basically constricts the airway. It can be skeletal as well. So sometimes we talk about it as being as little as a coffee stirrer. I don't know if you've ever tried it. Um, I actually experimented. I experiment with everything that we do here. Um, I took a coffee stirrer and I was gonna spend the entire day with the coffee stirrer. I wanted to see what it felt like to breathe for an extended period of time. Well, I made it maybe 10 minutes. And I'll tell you, I had the most significant headache I've ever had. I took Excedrin, nothing helped. 
it was awful. And all I can tell you is I can't imagine a child, you know, who doesn't have the ability or the knowledge to know what a, a, a normal airway is or being able to function and breathe normally um, would feel like. So they, they don't have that kind of realization and they suffer. Uh, and um, to be able to intercept and be able to create a garden hose for them is what our desire is. And I know as a parent, that's what we want for our kids. So you're probably asking yourself, how, how is this happening? I mean, I've never really heard about this. I didn't know about it. Well, there's a lot of things that are going on in our society that has led to um, these conditions. And um, when we talk to orthodontists, we know that this generation, 92% of malocclusions will appear in children. So that's a lot of crooked teeth. So crooked teeth, I almost consider an, another outward symptom of medical conditions, being the airway, the way they breathe. And this has been brought along, especially with the kind of prolonged or um, it seems like a daily use of pacifiers and bottles, um, nipple bottles. What happens is the way these are constructed it basically depresses the tongue. The tongue should be in the upper palate of the mouth. Believe it or not, if the tongue is up in the palate, there is only one way you can breathe, and that's through your nose. So do a little trick with me. Um, say the letter N. Where that sound ends is where your tongue should be at rest. Most of us do not know that. No one's ever told us that. But unfortunately, when we use the pacifiers and we use nipple bottles, that tongue never has the ability to get to the upper portion of the palate because that nipple keeps depressing it. At the same time, it creates a suction in the mouth. And as it is suctioning the mouth, it creates the arch to constrict. And when that arch is constricted, there's no way the tongue would have a place in the upper palate. So it's kind of a compounding problem. Now, Previously, there was much more breastfeeding that was happening. It's very rare that a mother would be able to spend two years breastfeeding a child. And breastfeeding basically puts that proper motion into place. It gives the proper oral um, muscular strength. It creates those habits. It puts the tongue in the right position. It develops the arches. So it's it's a combination of the lack of breastfeeding and the encouraged use of pacifiers and nipple bottles. Um, also soft diet. As you notice, everything melts in your mouth. Um, how many kids tell me, oh, I only eat French fries and applesauce? Well, that, that's not gonna help develop your oral cavity. So we see that a combination of these elements have basically impacted the growth and development and also the proper habits that we should see in the oral cavity in order to um, promote the growth and development. So sometimes we can see children that have an opening of the bite. Um, we, we know that it's probably occurring because there are outside factors that are contributing to that dentition. We know it's probably a finger sucking or a thumb sucker or possibly a tongue thruster or maybe they're a prolonged nipple bottle or pacifier user. So all of these things are what we should be identifying. And you as a parent, you'll see your child, you know these kind of um, dentitions and you might say, wow, I don't know where they got these teeth. I don't know why the teeth are coming in this way. Yeah, it could be a little bit of genetics, but a lot of these habits are contributing to these kind of um, impacts to the oral cavity. So we talk about airway. It's really important to understand that of the nasal cavity, we have hard palate and soft palate. We talk about the tongue and where the tongue is placed. We're gonna start talking about the airway and show you some examples of that. But just kind of know where everything is and why they're in the place and how they can impact um, the ability and the function. So the nose, we, we very rarely talk what what is the purpose of the nose? Um, you know, some people say I have a big nose, a hooked nose, a, a bumpy nose, a wide nose, all sorts of things. But really the nose serves five very important functions. 
Um, it serves as an air, air passageway. It warms and moistens, moistens inhaled um, air. Um, its membrane traps dust, pollen, bacteria, and other foreign matter. It contains receptors which sort out odors, and it helps in the pronunciation and the quality of the voice. It's very important that we utilize the nose. We basically eliminate the mouth breathing um, to help a child um, receive the proper CO2 and oxygen. The combination is very important and being able to have more purified air as the child um, is breathing. How many times do we see this? Um, so often we see kids that fall asleep in the car seat, they're exhausted. Um, it's another indication that a child, yes, you can get tired, but if you're seeing a child fall asleep more consistently, they're tired. And why are they tired? Probably because they're not getting a good night's sleep. Why aren't they getting a good night's sleep? Well, let's take a look at these underlying root causes. Um, as we said, mouth breathing is probably the number one outward symptom that we'll see. In this study, we saw 43%. I know many doctors feel it's much higher than that. It's something we really need to pay attention to. So if there's anything you take away, evaluate your child for mouth breathing. So this is a, a wonderful example of mouth breathing and why this is such a problem. So Eli is here. I'm gonna play this video so you can hear a little bit about Eli and him sleeping in his car seat. Now he's holding it. That was holding it. He's still holding it. He's trying to take in air. Oh, there he goes. Now watch. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's still holding his breath. And now he's going to gulp again. There he goes. That was it again. Again, he's holding, he's holding, he's trying, there he goes. So this has been three minutes and 15 seconds and you can see how many episodes he's had of not getting calm breaths in. Now watch what happens when I take his jaw and I just bring it forward. Just bring his airway forward. Now listen to the quiet breathing. There we go. Now he's breathing through his nose. And I brought his airway, I'm opening his airway. Just pulling his jaw forward ever so slightly. And now he's breathing through his nose quietly. His mouth is a little bit open, but he's breathing through his nose. Just by hear how quietly he's breathing, you don't hear him anymore. And all I did is gently bring his jaw forward. So all we have to say is, wow, isn't that? Um, I can't tell you how many times we see this happening in a child. And what the Healthy Start appliances are going to do is exactly that. It is an easing appliance that you can wear. A child will wear it passively at night when they sleep, but it will bring that lower jaw forward, prevent it from slipping back, prevent the mouth breathing, encourage the nasal breathing, and it will also do additional it will actually, there's myofunctional therapy built into that appliance. So every time that child swallows, he is going to reinforce the proper placement of the tongue. Every time, 500 times a night, repeating, repeating, repeating. Do you think that a habit will become ingrained? Absolutely. Can we train that child to breathe through their nose rather than their mouth? All day long, especially all night long. Um, can we Encourage that lower jaw from coming forward? Absolutely. Can we help with the orthodontic conditions? All day, every day. So it, it's an exciting treatment that we can 
use an easy um, appliance, an easy technique to basically guide, develop, and promote the growth to help the child basically gain the muscle strength, the lip strength, the proper habits in order to do this on his own for his lifetime. Um, how great is that, that we can make a more permanent change in these children? So we're talking about airway. Um, she talks about pulling the airway forward. Actually, an airway <laughs> it is uh, a dimension in the body that we're going to be able to allow it to grow or to prevent the impaction that occurs. So sometimes in a child, we'll see skeletal problems that are occurring that can constrict or restrict the airway. So this, these are two different five-year-olds. Um, the one on the left is actually one that has a constricted airway. And you can see where this arrow is. The one on the right actually has a normal airway. That's what we're looking for. So you can see the garden hose versus the coffee stirrer. Now this is interesting. Here's the same patient. So if, as a doctor, if you would look at this, you would say, wow, a great airway. They have a normal airway. They should be fine. But then you look at the sleep questionnaire, you talk to the parent, you talk to the child, and they're experiencing a lot of these outward symptoms. So we would anticipate seeing a normal airway or a, a restricted airway in about 21% of the population. So the question is, how do we have nine out of 10 kids having these issues? Well, the other percentage is caused by a habitual problem, especially mouth breathing. So on the right-hand side, look what happens when that child just opens their mouth by a half inch or more. You can see the constriction or the restriction of that airway. So just by opening up by a half an inch, we can actually close down the airway by six millimeters. And as we said, a seven-year-old only has a seven millimeter airway. So you can see how detrimental that is in a growing child. Another way of looking at what that really means. So on the right-hand side, this is a seven-year-old. Look at this, what a seven millimeter diameter airway looks like. Not too big. Now look what happens if we only are restricted down to one millimeter. That is, <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing my glasses. It's hard to see. So you can see the impact that this makes and how this would be devastating for a child. Here's a very interesting case, maybe a little bit too, um, what do you call medical, but I think the point is driven home. So when we look at children, we do have different tools that help us. Um, and obviously we're only as good as the tools we have. So one of them is called a CBCT scan, and it can actually measure the volume of the airway. So typically, they've come up with a, a mathematical equation that kind of helps us determine if the child's airway is normal, compromised, and it's the age of the child starting at age five times 10. So if you have a nine-year-old child, we would anticipate seeing an airway that was nine times 10 or 90 square millimeters. Well, this example here is a nine-year-old. And take a look, they have 53.6, so they're compromised. We already know they're deficient. We have to help them along. So after one month, with what we call the first appliance in the Healthy Start system, it's called a habit corrector, this child is then given a second CBCT scan with the appliance in the mouth to see how much airway um, gain we can um, develop with use of these appliances. Well, the interesting thing is, as a child grows, we peak in our airway development at age 17. So we anticipate an adult to peak at between 150 to 170 square millimeters. Bad news is, at age 21, our airway already starts to deteriorate. So we see many adults that have sleep apnea, and we've always asked, well, at age 40, you have sleep apnea. What were you like at age 17? Did you ever reach your maximum of 150 to 170 square millimeters? Or were you impacted even then? And as you have aged and the deterioration of your airway has occurred, has that caused the sleep apnea? Well, we're seeing more and more reasoning to believe that the sleep apnea 
probably starts at a very early age and continues through the lifetime. Well, with this healthy start, what we're seeing is that we're able to increase that airway to a measurement of 337 square millimeters in this particular case. But think about that. That's double what we would ever anticipate maximizing an adult. So it doesn't really matter if the airway is deteriorating over the course of your life. You have a long ways to go. Well, this is the research that Healthy Start is doing to look at this type of um, material, this type of um, research that will help us understand what we can create. If we are able to promote the growth and development of a child and put that oral cavity in the position that nature intended, what are the benefits? What can we hope to achieve? What is the longevity of this? Those are the questions we are asking to make, to look at this and understand the impact of what our society has done on our growth and development and understand how we can change that. How can we change the direction of your child and be able to put them on the proper path of growth and development? So here is a little schematic of um, what that material indicated. So let's just kind of go over. So if we look at mouth breathing and snoring, we realize that it's probably a result of extended bottle feeding and pacifier use. It causes poor tongue position and abnormal swallowing. Um, probably sugar, processed food, soft diet, poor oral habits, thumb and finger sucking, lip sucking, tongue thrusting. And this mouth breathing and snoring leads to a compromised airway. And what, what con constitutes a compromised airway? Well, it's reduced airway, restricts airflow, reduces oxygen, increases CO2, affects brain function, immune, endocrine systems, swollen adenoids, tonsils, low tongue position, tongue thrust, um, underdeveloped dental arches, overjet, overbite, crossbite. And this compromised airway basically portrays itself in sleep disorder breathing and these outward symptoms that we had discussed right at the beginning, restless sleep, ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, allergies, nightmares, daytime drowsiness, the 27 that we had talked about earlier. So you can see kind of the circle that occurs and what causes one to occur. Um, this is a very interesting study that occurred to show in an MRI, what exactly, what is the impact of lack of sleep? So the first three images on the top basically are an MRI of a patient that had a normal night's sleep. And you can see by the red and the um, yellow um, highlights, the activity in the brain function. The lower three basically is with one night of sleep deprivation. It is really hard to see the brain activity. You can see a little bit of red right here on this first um, image. But it, you can see the impact that sleep or lack of sleep causes on the brain function. So Healthy Start, what is it? Well, we've been around for 51 years. Um, we are proud to have treated 4 million children worldwide. Um, we have been the leaders in sleep, breathing, and airway development for many years. Um, the first indication um, occurred about 30 years ago in Italy during a very large study when we typically were looking to straighten teeth without braces. We were looking at orthodontic conditions and what we can treat early on. And what we were <laughs> kept getting reports back from was that the kids were doing better in school. Um, their child is all of a sudden um, coming in first in the track races. Um, their child tried out for the school play. It's like a totally different child that we have. And we realized the first indication was mouth breathing versus nasal breathing. So that's the beginning of our journey. And we are progressing and realizing there are so many other aspects to this conversation um, that lend to sleep breathing and airway development. So the Healthy Start system is a series of appliances. Um, they are removable. Most of them are worn passively at night that a child will wear to basically promote growth and development. So if your child is, say, five years of age, 
they would go into what we would call the Healthy Start Kids system. And it's a series of three appliances. And we begin with the first one that basically addresses the habits. Um, they will wear it passively at night when they sleep. Once they have their first permanent tooth starts to erupt, we'll move into the second appliance because we'll use this to guide all the permanent teeth in. At the same time we're guiding them in straight, we're making sure the arches are expanding because we need places to put the tongue. And at the same time, we're correcting those orthodontic conditions you hear of as overbite, overjet, open bite, class three, cross bite, class, all of those happen all at the same time. Sometimes we refer to this treatment as a three-dimensional type of treatment. You can see we, we do treat all the way up to adults. Um, our oldest patient is 84, um, but with adults, we have no more growth and habits are more ingrained. So the overall or the more permanent changes are more difficult to determine because of those scenarios. So anyways, it's never too late for any of us, right? Teaching an old, an old dog new tricks, right? So let's go back. Healthy Start addressing the root causes. So again, we talked about expanding the dental arches, establishing nasal breathing, training the tongue, eliminating bad habits, advancing the mandible to correct overjet, encouraging proper facial growth, body um, growth since lack of REM sleep impairs function of adrenal glands to secrete growth hormones and correcting most orthodontic problems. So let's start with the first appliance, which is called the habit corrector. Um, again, like I said, it is used primarily at night when the child sleeps. And what makes it really unique is it has built-in myofunctional therapy. Maybe you've heard that word before. It basically, myofunctional is teaching um, the tongue, the breathing, the functions of the oral cavity to operate in the proper behavior. And usually um, myofunctional therapy is a series of exercises that a child does or an adult during a period of time. Well, we all know that exercising, sometimes we don't do it as efficiently as we want, or sometimes we don't do it at all, or maybe the 20 times we're supposed to do it turns into doing it once or twice. Well, the uniqueness of this appliance is it is built into the appliance. So the child wearing it, it will be activated by a swallow. So it is almost automatic. So let me show you the features that we see. So we have these palatal tabs that are located in the appliance so that the patient can actually spread their tongue and create the expansion, sort of to create a parking spot for the tongue to be able to um, live in the upper palate where it belongs. Um, we also have a ramp that is built in. So the tongue is lifted. So it's not allowed to lay low. It's actually lifted to the roof of the mouth. These prongs here basically prevent the tongue thrust from occurring, but it also indicates to the tongue when it should be retrieved. So that whole motion is repeated over and over again um, as the child sleeps. Um, we also have um, pads that we can add. So if the child has a really um, severe open bite, it will help close that bite more efficiently. Um, we also have what we call um, a pull tab and the pull tab can hook to the child's night clothes. So if they are a mouth breather and we know we're gonna take some time to change them to a nasal breather, if the appliance topples out, it's not caught in the bed clothes. It can just easily be put back in the mouth. We also have two prongs on the bottom. They basically prevent the lower chin from drifting back. You saw how Eli's chin was lifted back. This keeps it in the proper position, but in a forward, so we never close off that airway. Um, when we look at a child, we want to understand what kind of swallow. Um, a swallow basically can determine how that tongue is functioning. It's really hard if you're trying to figure out if the tongue is really up or not. So taking a little glass of water, just you know, observe your child eating, observe your child swallowing with water. When we swallow and we take a drink of water, we should only see our neck muscles move. You should not see any motion in your lips. So if your child is taking a glass of water and making all sorts of funny motions with their lips, with their facial muscles, 
you know the tongue is not in the right position. Sometimes you'll hear someone say, do they have a reverse swallow? Meaning that the, the, the proper position of the tongue is not going in the proper direction and it's basically causing um, interruption, um, problems breathing, um, and um, problems in the construction in the oral cavity. So we're not creating the space that we need to create. Um, so again, when we use the Healthy Start Habit Corrector, we're basically repeating that um, swallow in the mouth. And we typically swallow one time a minute at night, two times a minute during the day. So if the child is simply wearing it at night, you can expect them to be repeating that habit probably close to 500 times each and every night. So that is a lot of repetition. So that habit becomes ingrained fairly quickly. And we change that mouth breather into a nasal breather um, many times within the first month of use. So it goes pretty quickly. Um, here is a study that is being published and it basically goes through 220 cases and what kind of percentages you can expect to see within the first five months. And it's really helpful because we want to make sure your child is on the right track. If we're not seeing the kind of correction we would anticipate, we want to look further to see if there's something else that is impacting your child. Sometimes it can be diet or the nutrition. So we want to make sure that we're looking at everything we possibly can to um, ensure that your child's getting the best treatment and obviously working forward to um, the healthiest life that they can have. So you can look at some of these areas and the percentages of correction that has occurred over the sample of 220 patients. Um, a very interesting conversation is a conversation in regard to ADD and ADHD. As we know, it's an epidemic. Um, I, I am older, um, but I have seen it. And, you know, it seems every time I turn around, more and more kids are being diagnosed, more and more kids are on medication. A recent statistic said there is three times as much um, drugs being prescribed for ADD and ADHD than kids that have ADD and ADHD. So um, the amount of medication that's being used to treat this is astounding. And um, we don't know where it'll end. I always ask the pediatrician, so what's the prognosis for this child? There is no prognosis. We're just trying to get the kid through school. We're trying to get them so that they're able to sit in their chair and be able to learn. I get it. I mean, it's hard if a kid is, you know, hanging from the ceiling. I, I, I understand it's, it's hard to, you know, um, just go through normal social motions um, with a child that is not available to learn or to listen or to behave or to sit or whatever it might be. But my message tonight is take a look at sleep first and see if that child is suffering from sleep. And the reason being is ADD and ADHD is, a, is not a blood test. It's a criteria. Um, there is the criteria that has to be fulfilled in order for a diagnosis of ADD and ADHD to occur. Well, guess what, guys? That same criteria is used to evaluate sleep and breathing disorders. Could they be misdiagnosed? I'm, I'm sure it happens all the time. In fact, the latest research showed that children with ADD and ADHD, 85% of them had sleep issues. Well, <laughs> that's astounding. So the question is, um, it, it's not whether or not ADD and ADHD exist. What the question is, is evaluate sleep first and see where that child lands. Then evaluate the ADD and ADHD. Um, there was a very large study. It was done by um, a woman named Karen Bonick. And it basically was over 13,000 patients. And she found that sleep disorder breathing increases the risk of ADD and ADHD by at least 50%. She also found that ADD and ADHD patients have little or no REM sleep, but have Delta sleep. Patients without ADD or ADHD have primarily REM sleep and Delta sleep. And the ADHD that was present in the study that we did accounted for 25.2% of the cases. So you can kind of get a little idea here are some really um, astounding statistics. Long-term effects of ADD and ADHD, well, 
of those children diagnosed with ADD and ADHD are held back one grade. 30% are held back two grades. Well, I got news for you. If that child is suffering from sleep issues, you could hold them back 10 grades. It's not gonna change the situation. So it's really important to evaluate a child maybe after sleep and breathing have been first and initially investigated. Another study that was very interesting looked at how sleep affects IQ. So they found that children that had sleep issues basically had a reduction in IQ by 10 to 20 points. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's college or no college. They went one step further and said, let's evaluate what one IQ point represents. They found during a lifetime of a child, one IQ point represents $170,000. So it is astronomical that this could impact a child to that degree. And if we can easily go in and basically change the trajectory of that child by implementing a system that can promote the growth and development and eliminate the proper habits, uh, there is no, I, I can't see a reason why you wouldn't do that. So let's talk about how Healthy Start promotes growth and development. Well, this is a diagram of normal craniofacial growth between the ages of two and 17. And you can see that the trajectory is forward and down. And we want to make sure that we're promoting that same growth and development with the Healthy Start appliances. What's interesting is to see how much growth occurs. Even at age two, you see 68% in the male has already developed and 73% in the female. Look at age 12. Typically we say age 12 is kind of the, the number we use to try to complete treatment by because most of the cranial facial growth is finished. So if we can get in there before age 12, we can do a lot in promoting growth and development. It's not to say that we can't make changes later on. It just means we'll have the biggest impact if we can catch them at that early age. So here are some of what we do. You can see here is a five-year-old that has an underdeveloped lower um, jaw. And you can see after two years during the exchange of primary to permanent teeth, we can see that we have this forward growth. You can see we have 54% more growth and that growth encourages the opening of the airway. We're gonna develop that airway as much as we can. So let's do the fun thing. Let's talk about some of the cases. Um, here's a seven-year-old boy. Here is his sleep questionnaire that his parents filled out. You can see there are a lot of, the, the scale goes from zero to five, five being the most um, prevalent or pronounced. So you can see a lot of threes, fours, fives for this child. Um, you can see that they indicated very delayed speech, um, didn't say many words up to age three or four. Pronunciation was very difficult for them. Um, this is after three months of using the Healthy Start system, the first appliance, and you can see zeros and ones. So let's see what he looks like. So here he is at initial, and you can see, um, we call this a very deep bite. See. I, I had explained that the teeth, you should see lower teeth. In this particular child, you do not. Um, you can see a little bit of squareness of the arches. You can see his physical appearance, circles under his eyes, um, kind of a lurching forward a little bit. So let's look at him. Here is him progressing. You can see, look at his bite, that completely open. Look at his facial structure, totally different. Look at the rounded arches. So, and you can see the upper. We transform this kid. We allow the growth and development to occur and we've changed his habits to help him obviously succeed in life. Here he is. Um, this is more toward the final. You can see orthodontically, he looks beautiful. You can look at his profile. His habits have been corrected. This is a stable result. We helped him during the growth and development we will not have much relapse in this case. So this is basically what you see is what you're gonna get. It's a beautiful finished case. And most importantly, the child's healthy. Let's take another child. Again, 
you can see the initial, you can see the deep bite. Um, in this child, the teeth are separated. There might be some tongue thrust. Here she is at her final. You can see the difference in the um, dentition. Here's her initial, here's her finish. Beautiful finish case. Here's another child. You can see a very deep bite. This is what it looks like with the appliance in the mouth. The teeth are coming in. You can see they're rotated. They're um, coming in at angles. The appliance captures those teeth and it actually straightens them out. Here is the child in the appliance as the teeth have developed. Here's another initial and you can see the finish. You can see how the teeth are put into alignment. Here's another case. Initial, finish. Here's an interesting girl. She, um, her mother actually um, had a lot of orthodontic um, issues to the point where it was so severe and she had nothing done. She was, I think in her late thirties, she ended up having to have surgery. So having a daughter that she recognized had many of the same similarities that she did. She wanted to do something early on. So she actually started, take a look at this girl. You can see the circles under her eyes. Um, you can see um, the deep bite that she has. Um, there's some bruxum that's going on, teeth grinding where she's um, um, clenching on her teeth. This is her as she's developing. You can see the circles are gone. Look at how beautiful her, her teeth. The arches are beautiful. The position, the habits have been corrected. Here she is. This is without any type of retention. I just want you to see how the case is maintained. Here she is even older. Beautiful. Here are a few others. You can see this child snores, bruxes. Bruxes means grinding their teeth, bad breath, ear infections. Um, a pretty significant case. Here he is. Here he is one year later. This particular child is out of Alaska. Um, here's another case you can see from beginning. Again, a lot of couple fives. Um, you can see how they came down to zeros and ones. Um, what's interesting is look at the arch. The arch is more of a square shape. It's really hard for the tongue. Um, we want to expand the arches and we want to create more of a um, oval shape, more of a natural shape. You can see the deep bite. You can see how the bite progressed. This is what we're looking for. Here's another child, same thing, snoring, bruxing, um, had a large spectrum of problems. Here he is mid-treatment. Here's his occlusion now, and this is 14 years later. So you can see the changes. Um, one of the fun things, we do have an app. Um, the app is used a couple different ways. Um, if you go on and look at the Healthy Start, there is a free app that you can download and it kind of goes through what we do, a little bit about what we just talked about tonight. Um, once you become a patient, the second part or the other side of the app is opened up. So your child has a lot of ability to have fun um, every night when they wake up in the morning, if they've worn their appliance, they answer questions, they get 30 minutes of game time, they get a coin that they can deposit into the bank. Um, there's prizes that they can get. It's, it's a lot of fun. You as a parent, it also gives you the opportunity to monitor the changes that you've seen based on the sleep questionnaire. And I think the funnest part is um, on Fridays, we give your child's cheek retractors and we'll take a photo of their dentition each Friday. So it will collect itself in kind of a flip book kind of form. So you can see the dramatic changes that have happened over the course of treatment. Um, I think it's great. Um, sometimes we forget, I would say most of the time we forget where our kids came from and just having that ability to look back and see, wow, we came a long way and look at how great these kids look. So it, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun for you to share with other families and um, talk about, you know, always, I, I think part of the beauty of being a parent is not only watching the growth and development of your child, but your neighbors. 
um, how many times um, those relationships, my kids are older, I still have relationships with those families, especially from Montessori to grammar school and um, exchanging um, doctors and ideas and, you know, issues that we have, maybe the same parents. So it, it's a great tool to do that. Um, as I said before, we've treated 4 million cases worldwide. We are very um, concerned and very focused on the safety of your children. So our appliances are FDA cleared. There's no latex, no silicone. All appliances are BPA, BPS free, phthalate free. We um, regulate ourselves to a class two medical device, which we do not need to do. That means that these appliances are safe enough to put into the body and the child can live with it. We want you to understand that your child's safety is our utmost concern. Um, everything we make is US made. Um, we, we love what we do. Um, we hope you have enjoyed tonight. Um, I can't tell you if I have changed just a few of your children's lives. Um, that's my dream. Um, I never, I never want to see a child suffer. Um, my kids laugh at me because I can be wherever. And if I see a child that's experienced it, my kids always ask me, please, mom, just hold back, hold back. Don't do it. I can't resist. I have to. I mean, if I was a mom and my child was struggling and somebody saw that and had maybe a solution, I would be forever grateful. So I, I hope I have just shed maybe a little bit of um, information for you, um, something that maybe will help your child, help your family, um, give your child just the, every advantage in life, to remove those barriers that are impacting them and allow them to soar, who knows? Maybe it's going to be your child that's going to come up with the cure for cancer. Um, we just don't know. So anything we can do to ensure the success of a child, I'm there. And I, and I know you are too. So if, if you're looking to determine, now what do I do? Um, absolutely. Um, take that sleep questionnaire, fill that out. Um, you can always reach out to us um, at thehealthystart.com. Um, we can provide you with more information. But really, go to the Healthy Start website, www.thehealthystart.com, and go to the provider section or go to the doctor locator, and it will be able to direct you to a doctor in your area. Um, please visit them. Um, please go for a consultation. Um, they'll go over and um, look at the specifics of your child. Um, always get the information. You can always make that decision, but I would encourage you, don't wait till two years from now. I would do it tomorrow. Pick up the phone, make that call, easy as pie. Um, every child, you're back in school, make those years count. It's really important. So um, I want to thank you. Susie, I think you're on here too. I, I am, yes. And, and I, I, Leslie, I would like to thank you actually for taking so much time tonight out of, out of your evening to share your expertise. You know, I, I think a lot of parents are like me and, you know, there are so many aha moments the first time you hear this information. It just really, it really just takes you aback. And, you know, one of the things I'd like to stress if you're a parent or if you're a grandparent listening in, you know, as Leslie said, visit the Healthy Start website fill out that sleep questionnaire. You can actually fill it out electronically right there on the website, you know, for the child in your life and, and realize there's no labels, you know, um, but instead, you know, the applicable symptoms, you know, could be an indicator that your child may have sleep and airway issues. And the amazing thing is that there is help, um, you know, and the treatment is non-invasive, it's pain-free, you know, and, and although the health of your child is more important than anything, um, cool thing is they actually walk away with a beautiful smile, <laughs> which is which is fantastic. So please don't wait. Um, you know, and actually this presentation has been recorded. It's going to be available on the Healthy Start Facebook page. Um, so please do not hesitate to share this with the other parents that you know as well. Um, so again, I'd like to truly thank all of you who joined us this evening. Um, this is information that can absolutely change lives. And Leslie, thank you so much again. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. Good night, everyone. Good night. Um, hope to see you. Take care. Bye-bye.